Hi hiya, Ted Dex Bankart Gang. It's I, Shambles Guru. But it's probably easier if you just call me Shambles. So how are you? Ready uh, Ready for the presentation? Yep, all ready. I'm a little nervous, but excited at the same time to be able to share our experiences with everybody. So let's jump straight in as time is tight. Uh, by the way, who's the guy with the camera on his shoulder? Oh, well, no, let me introduce you. This is Leon. He's a videographer. Uh, but as he's filming in a virtual world, then we use the term machinimist. Leon, how about uh, a few words about yourself? Hi, I'm Leon Tabrock in the virtual world, Neil Corbett in the physical world. Uh, my company, Icarus, is a joint US-UK multimedia team where we build, landscape and code in 3D environments, in addition to recording and editing machinima for organisations such as ISI. Uh, welcome, Leon. Many thanks for uh, sharing your skills and expertise. Now, Shambles, maybe you could start by telling us something about yourself and where we are. Okay. Introducing myself. Why? Well, I'm an avatar in an online world that's called Second Life. And I was created back in March 2007 uh, by that yeah, human guy on the stage. And he reckons he made me to look like himself in the real uh, world. Yeah, I can see some of you smiling. Uh, don't smile. He, he gets upset. Um, I think the closest we get is we both have uh, similar glasses. Um, a company called Linden Labs in San Francisco started Second Life in 2002. Uh, it's free for you to sign up and create an avatar. Uh, there are well over 12 million registrations. And at any one time, there's usually around about 50 or 60,000 people logged in simultaneously. Oh, and yes, I almost forgot, you have to be at least 18 years old to come into the main grid, as it's called, of Second Life. And now I'm standing in the welcome area of an estate consisting of three islands, three sims called International Schools Island, which Chris and I built. In fact, I did most of the work. He just pays the invoices that come from Linden Labs. And you can see from the map behind me that there are links on that map that are live, and clicking on the different places will actually teleport you to them or give you a landmark so you can go there later. Around us, you can see some towers, and in those towers, we're building a 3D index of Second Life itself, uh, specifically for educators. So the towers are full of links, resources, and tools, mostly free, that are relevant to teachers and learners. But, Chris, you, you, really, you don't want me to talk about International Schools Island, do you? You want me to talk about some of the weekly meetings we try and attend. Isn't that right? Actually, I'd love you to talk about uh, International Schools Island. But let's focus on the three Second Life groups. Um, did you bring the, the visuals we designed? Yep, I do have the uh, PowerPoints, of course. Uh, apologies to the Prezi community. They're not Prezi presentations. Um, OK, let's walk over to my fancy director's chair. Um, before we start, I'd just like to draw attention to the white spot that you can probably see hovering over my head. This spot shows that my computer is set up to use voice. Um, probably means I, I have a headset and a microphone attached. And when I speak, you'll see green radio waves emanating from that spot. Uh, this is a visu visual indicator that I'm the avatar speaking. And it's very useful when you have a group of avatars talking and you can't distinguish which one it is that's talking. OK, moving on. The visuals are here in this Death by PowerPoint presenter. I'm going to highlight three groups that we try and attend each week. The first is ISTE. It's the largest K-12 professional teacher technology education group in the good old US of A. And they do have the largest community of active educators in Second Life. Uh, each week they have several scheduled meetings, you can see from the graphics, formal and informal. Some are about virtual worlds themselves and their use in teaching and learning, but many, many others are more general about uh, teaching and learning in, uh, overall. They also have an active group of volunteer docents, which was actually a new word for me when I came to Second Life, maybe it's North American, who offer a mentoring and orientation service. So if you're an educator and going into Second Life, then I cannot recommend more highly visit ISTE, visit their island or their group of islands. The next group, just let me change the slide, uh, this, this group is called Tools Jam and meets every Tuesday night, Thai time. Uh, this has a wider membership, not, not just educators, and also includes those from uh, commercial, the commercial world. All have a common interest in tools that are in Second Life or being developed in Second Life. And, and this presentation screen next to me is a, is a great example of a tool that somebody has made. Uh, and in this particular case, 
uh, they made it open source, so it's free. Some some tools, many tools are also built purely for uh, commercial purposes, uh, are on sale, uh, and the creator hopes to make uh, a profit from them. Uh, tools generally are built for uh, facilitating communication with others, moving around, uh, building, uh, having some fun. Uh, Chris and I are, have a personal interest in tools for, for group management and those tools which help facilitate teaching and learning. Uh, and while I'm here on this group, a shout out to Jen, who conceived Tools Jam and organises the weekly session. Many, many thanks for that, Jen. Chris, are you happy with me doing all this talking? Shall I, shall I go on to the third and final group? Okay. Okay, then. So let's go to the next group. Just click on the presenter. I hope the slides are learning quickly for you. Poor connectivity is the bane of working in virtual worlds. And the resulting lag is uh, just yuck. Anyway, the final group to mention is called Train for Success, who meet late every Thursday evening, Thai time. Uh, some educators attend these sessions, but the majority are from the world of commerce. This is a session that focuses on the use of virtual worlds, not just Second Life, in the commercial realm generally. Uh, how can they help companies achieve their goals and aspirations uh, and make or save money? Uh, there are presentations, discussions, field trips, not only about public virtual worlds, but also about those that run privately, which we'll never see, which are behind company firewalls. So for many companies, these immersive environments are already reducing employee travel, saving money, and reducing the car carbon footprints. In a couple of recent meetings, they're quite interesting. They, they showed one involving uh, simulations in medical training, and the other showed the training of immigration and customs officers at the border between the US and uh, Canada. And that's it. Three different groups with three different agendas in a, as an example of sessions that contribute to uh, mine and Chris's own continual professioning development. Chris, over to you. Okay, that was brilliant. With the time left, we thought we'd show everyone just two of the tools available in Second Life. One is a holodeck and the other a translation tool. So let's just move over to where uh, the translation box is. Okay, so I'm going to move over to the translator that Chris has uh, referred to. Uh, we, we're doing a demonstration with it. Um, or we were going to do a demonstration with it with other language speakers, but as time is short, uh, I'm going to give just a brief explanation. It doesn't look much, but there are scripts in this box that are absolute magic. Uh, when I click on the translator, you should see a drop-down blue menu uh, in the top right of the screen. That asks me to choose my preferred language. And there's a surprisingly large collection. I think it's over 50, which includes many Asian languages. Uh, Thai is one of them. And any avatar who's nearby can click on the translator and choose their own language. Uh, the avatar name and chosen language are then displayed hovering over the box. So we all just type in our message chat windows using our own chosen language, and we would all then see the messages from others translated into our own language. This is typed chat, remember, not voice. Now, how magical is that? Uh, what is even more magical is that the person who has built this and continues to develop it uh, makes it available for free. It's op open source. Mm. This, is an, it, this in itself is an example of the collaborative community that lives in Second Life, and it actually really, really, really warms my heart. And that's it. Language barriers are lowered even more. Phew, this is getting hard work, and the clock's ticking, and I'm beginning to panic that we're running out of time. Um, shall, let's move on to the second tool that we promised. Yes, let's move over to the holodeck. Uh, which is on the third sim on International Schools Island. And to save some time, instead of walking or flying, and yes, we can fly there, let's teleport Star Trek style. Shambles guru. <laughs> what, a, what a show off this shambles guy is. <laughs> Did you like the entrance? And why aren't you kneeling? <laughs> okay, do your stuff. If, if, if you're a Star Trek fan, then you'll already know what holodeck is. Uh, I wonder if there are any Trekkies here. Hands up. No, no, let's, let's move on. No time. The concept of a holodeck is easy. You press a button and your immediate environment changes. Uh, if you want a conference room, for example, then press a button and it becomes a, a conference room. Okay, uh, other examples. Let's have a look around the audience. Uh, other examples might be... Okay, you want an insane asylum. Is that right? An asylum for the mentally challenged. So press that button, a menu drops down, and you just choose asylum. Let's see if it works. Well, here it is, with padded cells and other instruments of mass humiliation. You'll see that it's an interactive environment. Even the padded cells have individualized uh, different reactions. 
Uh, and why would you want this, you'd, you might ask, other than being uh, a little weird? Well, the answer is simulations and role play. It could just have easily been a hotel lobby or a farmyard or an airport lounge where language students could all do role play exercises uh, requiring vocabulary of, of that particular environment. Now, let's just click this scene. I have to move on quickly and try one more. We already have meetings and conference areas elsewhere on International Schools Island. But if we, don't, if we didn't, then I could just press the relevant button and that would res a lecture theatre. Your art out, Captain Kirk. Okay, so let's, let's do this. It's resing up now. Not only does this conference room res up, but it has screens that will run different media. PowerPoints, videos, audio, etc. Isn't that that's cool? So Chris, time's up. How'd it go? Any reaction from the TEDxers? Looking around. What? I thought it was brilliant. But then I am biased. Okay, that's it there. Uh, Chris, um, one, one last question from me. Uh, you, do you think the audience actually realises we're the same person? Well, I think they do. Although I do suspect several are wondering if you and I need to spend more quality time in the, in the mental okay. asylum. Have fun, everybody. Take care. Uh, thanks very much for the tour and demo. Catch you later.